property. Then, right after that, that's when everybody start wearing suits. Because it's business now. Come on, somebody. It's not ministry no more. It's business. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. I'm on one. And you're not going to like it tonight for you that are not really real. It, it, business. Which I told y'all, and I'm going to say it again, as a prophet of God, God never told us to get off the ropes. That's why when I preach, which I have just opened up my itinerary and I'm getting ready to start flying and going preach, you will see me with my robe. Hallelujah. And let me tell y'all, let me slow it down. Let me tell you why God put the robes on us. Because when you put on the robe, oh, come on, somebody walk with me. Y'all remember when y'all saw men and women, God, with the robe, even if they weren't real, you would say, that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. Because you respected the idea of the robe. The robe was an example of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The robe meant that they were righteous. Oh, come on, somebody. And believe it or not, there was a spirit on robes. There's a spirit on those that wear robes. God says, my, my presence rests on robes. He said, because you are covered. I'm about to preach this thing. He said, because you are covered. Because it's about holiness. I didn't say being perfect, but it's about holiness. Oh, I'm going to walk this thing through. So now, after that happened, because now you brought in the suits, people start dressing it. Well, I could, the Bible says, and we love to use scripture to benefit what we're saying. I, I, the Bible says, come as you are. So then we start showing a little cleavage. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to preach this thing. And the men start wearing them tight jeans. And, and now you can see the imprints. And, and now women preaching and they best, their breasts, you know, bouncing everywhere. And, and now people don't even even know what the pastor fine or oh, she fine oh come on somebody hallelujah I, i'm just walking through it walk with me walk with me walk with me because i'm walking heavy up in here so now there it starts the whirlwind of lust greed selfishness it came in the church because we opened the door, God says. Hallelujah. God said, we opened the door to all this foolishness. And then if somebody say something, y'all y'all say they hating or, or, or this saw that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, so, so let me tell you what happened. God say, because you have lowered the standard, that's when the enemy say, oh, I can come in now. You know, my grandmother used to always say, you give them, you give the enemy a ride, he, he want to drive. That's exactly what's happening. Y'all not going to like me tonight and ain't nobody playing. And, and, and wait till I do this second video. Let me tell y'all something. So God is saying we have to bring back the standard. And that is why the Bible says judgment must begin in the house of God. Hold on. I ain't even finished. I'm just starting. They're not going to like me, God. That's okay. The gospel industry. Y'all don't notice the, the gospel so say celebrity stars, which really you're supposed to be a servant, not no star, but whatever. What they doing? Wearing everything out, cleavage, this and that. And hold on, they've been doing it. Tight, getting their awards. You can get mad at me if you want. I really don't care no more. Y'all know I don't care. Because when I get in judgment, I'm going to say, I say to God. And let me tell you something. Just because I say what I say, I love every last one of y'all. But I don't have time to play games because I see stuff coming. Stuff coming real quick. Y'all thinking we have time. You see these last two months? And everybody, if y'all want, go look at Kent Christmas. I'm going to say his name again. Kent Christmas. Word for word, what I've been prophesying about the last two months. A little bit more, though. He added a little bit more. Stuff is getting ready to come and happen. Y'all going to see famous preachers dying. Y'all going to see ch churches closing. God is getting ready to close churches. Close it. That's not mine. God is, thank you, Lord, he, the cover coming off. I don't care if it's me. I'm in that too. Everything I preach to you is coming for me too. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God say everything is getting ready to be uncovered. All them little secret deals, all them little things that you do in church, out of church, on the phone call conversations. God said, repent, and I'm in there too. He said, repent, and if you're going to walk it, walk it like you talk it for real. Because it's a facade now. Church ain't church. I'm, coming, I'm keeping it so real, I ain't got time to play. When the last time you saw somebody saved for real? Don't play with me. Huh? Huh? Talk to me. When the last time you saw him do an altar call? When the last time you saw somebody get healed and delivered in your church? What your pastor working with? Oh, I ain't, I ain't got time to play. When the last time a gospel singer, I, I, I'm on everybody, really sung with the anointing. Don't fool me now and don't fool yourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming from. And, and, oh, I'm going here tonight. I had exposed somebody and their church went on live 
and was talking about me. Ain't nobody hating. I'm in a class all by myself. Y'all, y'all, y'all got me. Y'all got me tonight. I'm in a class all by myself. I'm a psalmist. I ain't no singer. What's wrong with you? Y'all don't notice my music different. I sing under the anointing of God. What you talking about? Nobody hating on nobody. I love everybody. But if you're dirty, you're dirty. Period. And I'm a prophet, so I don't have time to play this game. Because let me tell y'all what God told me concerning everybody. This last thing I exposed, let me tell y'all what God told me. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I didn't want to do it because I already knew I was going to get hit. Because it's close. All right? It's down there from where I live in Abbeville, Louisiana. So I already knew I was going to get hit and talked about. And God told me this. He said, if you don't say nothing, I'm going to have somebody else call it out and call you out for not saying it. I was like, I got scared. Oh, I'm telling the truth. I I, I don't have to lie. I got scared. I said, ooh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait God. We ain't got to do that. <laughs> what you want me to say? How you want me to say it? And the reason why God call people out is not to hurt you, beloved. Everybody I've ever called out, I promise you I don't have nothing against you. Because God don't use hateful people. He can't. He won't because the anointing can't flow. But it is mandated because hopefully you'll feel ashamed and you'll go to God. And truth be told, if y'all want to know the truth, most of the people I call up, I see they didn't got they they didn't got their head right. Y'all can say what y'all want. They didn't got their head right. I'm gonna say it again. They didn't got their head right. You might not like me, but your head right. If I don't care about what how you feel about me, but I bet you went to God. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. Preachers, teachers, evangelists, apostles, bishops. Stop trying to be people's friend. Because I'm telling you, God is coming for us in this hour. He, 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 he cleaning house. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. When my eyes get big, y'all know the power of God in me. I, I, he cleaning house. And me too. I can get it too. I'm not exempt. Come on, somebody. I'm telling y'all. I got so scared. The stuff I've been seeing and God, what he been saying. I'm like, God, you're not playing. He said, I never did. Come on, somebody. God said, I never did play. He said, y'all play, but I don't play. Y'all, y'all want money? So y'all tricking for money? Ooh, even in the church. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it with pastor, preacher, and teacher. Pay your bills. <laughs> buying cars, buying houses, trying to floss. But you can't lay hands on nobody. You can't pray out of nothing. Because you ain't got nothing. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Half of y'all ain't enough. No, no, no. I don't even have one fourth. You could preach from the hip because that's what you've been doing. You can teach from the hip because that's what you've been doing. But with this stuff coming, it's coming. Because let me tell y'all something. All these killings are not just random. Some of it that 5G is messing people's mind. Some of it is they, 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 let me tell you something. It happened to me. Y'all, <laughs> everything I say, go to God if you think I'm lying. One day I went to this church. This man hit me on the arm. And I went home, my arm. So I don't know what he hit me with. But it seemed like he must have had a needle or something. I was hurting. I felt kind of sick. That's what they're doing. They're passing by people and sticking them or doing something. And y'all sitting up there. I keep telling y'all, and I don't know why y'all don't believe me. All you got to do is go to God. In this hour, their power is witchcraft. Just like our power is the anointing, their power is witchcraft. And they're playing with it. They think it's funny. That's why God told me, he said, Deanna, stop eating out. Look, I'm going to tell y'all what happened. I'm going to tell y'all what happened this week. Disobedient. Order some food. I was sick in here for a week. That's why I couldn't get on here. God told me this about last week. But I couldn't even get on here because I was sick. I repented. I said, okay, God. It wasn't, uh, you know, because I'm still fasting and everything. But it was the idea he told me not to do it. And I thought, okay. You know, and they, they had to put something in there. Because when I said I was sick, I was sick up in here. I felt like I was, <laughs> something was going to happen. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> And God say, how many times I got to tell you? I say, God, I repent. I will never do it again. From this day forward, I don't care how tired I am. I'm just going to have to fix what I fix. If it's either apple or orange or whatever the case may be. I keep telling y'all, pray over your food. Pray over your, your children. <sighs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is raising the standard back up. He's raising the standard back up, he say. Hallelujah. He, he say, he say you, do you want me or do you just want what's in my hand? He said, because it looked like everybody just want it was in his hand. He said, they're not spending time with me, Deanna. He said, they don't know my voice. That's why everybody on everybody else lies. Pray for me. Pray for me. You can't pray for yourselves. 
And don't pray for me because if you ain't got no prayer life, you can't pray for me. Oh, come on, somebody. Car, hallelujah. Y'all know it's true. These last two months and the beginning of next year, y'all going to start seeing a divine turnaround, a divine turnaround to where people are going to, I'm telling you, they're going to start getting exposed, but they're going to repent. I, I see a repent. They're going to repent, but they're going to get exposed. It's going to be a hard exposure. And I don't think y'all understand. You see, God exposed all of us. It's a soft exposure. He'll send somebody or he'll tell you, stop playing with me. Stop doing what you're doing. You know how you do it. But a hard exposure. Let me give you an example of a hard exposure. And I'm sorry that I have to do it like that. But Bishop Eddie Long, that was a hard exposure. Um, Prophetess Juanita Bynum, what she went through. God loves us, but he don't play with us. So when are we going to stop playing with God, people? Hmm? When, when are we going to stop playing with God? And I'm going to say this too. Y'all keep putting y'all mouth on true women and men of God. Keep on. I'm 53 and I'm, I'm about to say it. I've said it about three or four times. I know y'all don't like it when I say it, but I'm going to say it. I pray for people that put their mouth on me because something always happened to them. If you don't believe me, inbox me. I, I, I'll give you names and you can go look. So, so one person right now, look like she didn't. And I cried. Because I'm not that type of person. I'm not the, oh God, that's good, that's good. Because God said, I turn it on you. Y'all better stop putting your mouth on true women of God and true men of God because you don't like what they say or what they do or how they roll. That's not your business. That's God's business. That's God's servant. Come on, somebody, I feel the power of God. That's not your business. You know what your business is? If you want to understand, go to God. God, if what is what they're saying is true, because God will tell you. God tells the truth. Come on, somebody, because he's God. Come on, somebody, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in this hour, you better watch what you say. You better watch what you do. And you better be in obedience. I'm telling you, Matthew 6, 33, he gave me that this morning. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not yours. You see, people think th th there's a scripture that says, it seems there's a way that seemeth right to man. As a matter of fact, let, let me let me try to go to it because I don't want to just say it like that. Hold on just one moment. Just one moment. Okay, hold on. Okay, I got it. Hold on, y'all. Because I don't want to just say that. Proverbs 14, 12 says, Oh, Lord. It's taking forever. Hold on just one moment. Okay, there it is. It says, um, I have to move this one a minute. It says, there is a way what seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Beloved, a true prophet is not trying to hurt you. We're trying to tell you so that you can go to God and say, God, what must I do to be saved? God, help me. I don't know how to get out of this sin. God, help me. God will send help. There is always, I'm telling you, I, I've been on this earth 53 years and God knows I've done some good things. I've done some bad things. Hallelujah. And he's helped me out of all of it. As a matter of fact, I was just explaining to somebody tonight. I remember when I almost got killed out in them streets seven times and I was doing some dirt. I can't lie to y'all. And he saved me. How much more will he save you now you love him? But you see, we got to do what God say do. The church then got out of order. I'm, I'm, I'll be real what he say. People cussing each other out. Oh, I'm going here. See, when Kirk Franklin cussed his son out, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, that's good. That's right. That's right. You are a liar before God. You can get mad if you want. That's not how a man of God talk. That's not how a woman of God talk. Sometimes God get mad at me for saying H-E-L-L. -L. So what you talking about? Why y'all stop playing? Let's just go here. If Jesus Christ was on this earth right now, you know, doggone well, half of y'all wouldn't be acting the way you acting and talking the way you talking and dressing the way you dressing. Stop playing. You'd be trying to get to heaven because you know that that's what, And just like he say, you can't come around. You got to go through him. So y'all sitting up there, your money can't save you. Your honey can't save you, and your funny can't save you. I'm telling you, this is a dust said the Lord. Repent, and let's get it right. How do we get it right? Go to God. God, help me. Help me, God. And God will send true men and women of God that will help you, that will gird you, but that will correct you. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. I was a little hellion. I was. Everybody in Abbeville, Louisiana could tell you. I, girl, what I wasn't doing. So when I got to California, I still had that stuff in me trying to go to church. And the women 
at Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento, California, where I got trained. These, oh, no. But you, you ain't come in here acting like no thug. You ain't going to be talking like that, walking like that, acting crazy. And I was embarrassed. I ain't going to lie. I was embarrassed. They embarrassed me. I was, trying, I was still trying to operate like I did in the world, in the kingdom. And they said, no, that's not how it flowed. That's one thing I could say. I don't care what nobody say. Pastor Philip Godot Sr., that's who I was under. That man don't play. I ain't saying he perfect. But he run a tight shift, honey. You going to walk it? You going to talk it? You going to live it? Are you getting up out of there? Let me tell you what that man did one day. All right? Let's just let you know he don't play. And I love him for that. And I wish more pastors would be like that, truth be told. That's why people, either they like him or, or they, they, they love him. There's no in between. And that's how I am too. One day, they had a guy up in there. And he was just sleeping with everybody. Well, trying to. Pastor got that boy a picture. <laughs> they got that man a picture. And put it on the... Uh, on the thing, on the video thing, and say, you see this? That's a wolf. <laughs> what? We was all shocked. He said, and I'll call out anybody else. Leave my daughters alone. You didn't hear what I said. You, the, the leadership supposed to cover you. If they don't cover you, then that ain't a real leader. They're supposed to cover you. They're supposed to let a wolf get to you. Oh, come on, somebody. Who am I talking to up in here? Because if you're getting hit in your church, then you need to check your pastor because that ain't a pastor. Oh, come on, somebody. You're supposed to cover the people of God. Rebuke them. Talk to them. Love them. Chastise them. Whatever it takes. You're going to get right up in here or get up out of here. It's called protocol. It's called accountability. It's called responsibility. It's called girding. Because guess what's going to happen? God going to hit that man of God anyway for not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And that's what's happening right now. He, the, the pastor sleeping with the um, congregation is all about money. It shouldn't be all about money. Let me tell y'all something. All the money that have came through my hands, people people talk crazy to me. You could have had a house. You could. I can't do what everybody else do. If let's say God give me five thousand dollars, I might can maybe spend maybe five hundred. God gonna tell me go feed the homeless, go do this, go do that, and I am happy to. I don't get to. Well, I'm gonna go buy me this. I'm gonna go buy me. I don't even shop unless God tell me to shop. That's how I roll. I'm telling you the truth. And anybody at, could tell you that. Because God wants to make sure that if he tell you to bless somebody, then you'll have it. It's called obedience. And I'm still processing that. Come on, somebody. It's about obedience. Oh, come on, somebody. I hope y'all feeling me tonight. Praise God. Praise God. This stuff is real. We got to get back. Thank you, Lord. We lost sight of Jesus. That's what I'm really saying. Y'all, we lost sight and y'all know it's true. We, we, we started worrying about a credit score. We started worrying about how kind of house we have. We started worrying about uh, um, if we're going to marry this one. Or, uh, we stopped just saying, God, just give me you. Matthew 6, 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. God and his righteousness. He didn't say ours because we filthy. We're not right. Truth be told. None of us. Hallelujah. So God is demanding in this hour. Come back home. Come back to me with a pure heart. With a whole heart. I'm going to tell you what most people are doing. And I'm not. Hold on. I'm telling you what does say the Lord. So I'm not judging. Okay. Most people are straddling the fence. You really love God. You love God. But you're still doing a little something, something. I did that. I did it. I can't lie to you. God exposed it every time. I'm going to tell y'all the hardest time, I think. I was so... I've said this before, but for the ones that never knew, I'm about to tell you. So I was in Sacramento, and I already told y'all. As a matter of fact, they had, ju we had, just, they had just got a prophetess class. You can only get away with stuff for so long. Before God say, okay, he'll stop talking. And you think you didn't got away. And then he'll say, uncover it. And something will happen and everybody know your business now. And now you can't hide no more. That's why I preached with so much passion. God loves us enough to tell us, stop, stop playing with me. Get this thing right. And shame on every pastor and preacher that's not telling the truth. Y'all not telling them people about new world order. Y'all not telling them people that the gun law is getting ready to drop. That's what I was going to say. You see how God brought that around? Because, I, you know, I be talking so fast sometimes. Let me tell y'all what's going on. All these people getting killed, y'all think it's just random. These are hits. They need that gun law to drop. And when that gun law drop, martial law dropping. And you know the sad part? Oh, I'm about to get you for real. 
They got some preachers and pastors and gospel singers that then made allegiance with them people, thinking they're going to save their family. But let me prophesy to you that did that, that sold, that selling out the people of God, thinking you're going to spare your family. After they use you to get us, they're going to kill you, God say. Hallelujah, I'm telling you what God say. So you ain't getting away. God going God gonna to let you hang, Haman. You know how you put build that stuff for Mordecai? You're going to get hung, Haman. Oh, come on, somebody, because y'all doing it, God say. Y'all didn't sign that FEMA thing. Y'all didn't sign that FEMA thing. Y'all didn't sign that FEMA thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell it. That's why, that's why they don't like me. She see too much. She a real seer. Mm-hmm. That's why these big guys be looking, too. Mm-hmm. So that's all I want to say for this one. I'm coming back on. But I'm telling y'all now. <sighs> It's getting ready to go down. It's real. These people are here and they're not playing. These are the descendants of Cain that started the Illuminati. They hate God and they hate people of God. And God has permitted them to do what they're getting ready to do. Death is coming. Slavery is coming. And the people of God, the true people of God, that's why, that's why people don't want to be real. We know they're getting ready to do what's dead. But for Christ I live and for Christ I die. I mean, that's what it is. And that's why people don't want to be holy. And that's why, because they're scared. How you going to be a cruel Christian that's scared to die? You didn't read no Bible. Because everybody in the, in the everybody died, including Jesus. So you scared to die? Yeah. And that's what's happening. You're scared. Mm -hmm. You're scared. That's why you didn't, you didn't shook hands with the devil. But how can you trust a liar? Come on, somebody. I feel the power of God. So. God bless you. God keep you. I love you all. And that's why I tell y'all the truth. I, t I just tell y'all the truth. And it's out of love. It's not out of hate. It's not out of any type of spirit. That's not, a, that's not, that's me. That's not me. I love God too much. And, and true people of God, we love our brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So I pray that you are strengthened in this hour. I pray that you don't take that dangling carrot. What's that dangling? Let me tell y'all something. Let me end it with this. All we did was trade places with Jesus. What am I saying? Remember when he offered Jesus, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you the world. Don't lie. Open your eyes. Anybody, oh, Lord, they ain't going to like this. Anybody that's up there, then fell down and worshiped him. Y'all can say what you want to say. They don't want us because they know we're going to tell the truth and that anointing are brick things. <laughs> they ain't ready, Lord. You can't get that level without their signature, without their check. <laughs> Keep playing. But God is about to expose them, all of them. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. The line is being drawn, said the Lord. The line is being drawn, said the Lord. The line is being drawn. That's why he's about to expose everybody. We're about to know all who took that doggone carry. Oh, we're about to know. Remember, I said it. Today is October 29th. We're about to know. God is about to expose everybody that took that carry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Everybody took that payoff. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. Roll out soldiers for that is truly who we are. I'm coming back and do a quick one. God bless.